Good morning, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com, the eBay search site for Asian and Western antiques. And uh, as many of you know, each weekend on Saturday nights we send out a newsletter. And uh, we like to go back a few days after the weekend and see how the items did that we featured. Basically, the newsletter is a, uh, a watch list that we send out to around 7,000 7, subscribers at this point around the world who collect and uh, deal in Asian antiques. If you don't get it, sign up for it right there. Give us your email address. We'll send it to you. It's free. This is the newsletter from last Saturday night, March 28th. Uh, it's pretty clean looking, uh, easy, to, easy to use. If you want to look at something, just click a button. This is a seller downsizing. He's a seller we feature uh, when he has things up. He's from, uh, I believe he's in Florida. He sells a lot of snuff bottles. He's, he has a good eye for snuff bottles. And uh, currently he still has some up. But we want to look at his completed listings to see how they did. And we'll go over a little bit on, on why they did what they did. There's a nice uh, 15th century uh, bottle vase. With well done flared neck, aubergine, Ming Dynasty. About $1,000. Uh, very attractive Dewa Blanc de Chine sensor. 17th, probably 18th century. Uh, well done, $978. And a Famille Rose uh, uh, Republican period dish, about almost $1,000. He had this up a couple of weeks ago. It was a very attractive Chinese enamel white, uh, uh, white glass snuff bottle, uh, about 2739 We also had that in the newsletter at the time. And who else do we have here? We have... Uh, God Revy 8. He's a seller we like over in England. His name is William. He handles good things. He had this. This was a very attractive little, very small hexagonal enamel box. Brought $770. Quite collectible. Uh, and then he had, uh, he had something else on here that I liked a lot. Oh, this. This uh, um, Bing Rong style uh, vase. You don't see these very often, but they're very collected, very much collected in China. <coughs> and, and there's a detail of it. It's a white glazed porcelain with this stippling all over it and often has relief decoration like this one does. And uh, did well. It brought $708 or 477 pounds. Further down the page we have Atelier 2B. He's a seller in the Netherlands and we feature him for very regularly. He has an excellent eye for color. He loves brilliant colors, brilliantly enameled pieces. That's what he's known for, and uh, he, he, you can buy from this guy. He's a he's a good seller, and uh, he you can get some fairly good buys. This is a nice early 20th century uh, double peacock uh, vase. Went for just $235. Somebody got a good deal on that, and uh, a number of other pieces. This was a good um, um, mid 18th century, possibly Yongchen period uh, plate. Went for 200. He overexposed the picture a little bit there. The, the he uses a little too much light sometimes. And this vase, beautifully shaped vase, 19th century vase, Famille Rose, lovely decoration on it. Uh, it had been drilled, as I recall, so it uh, it uh, didn't bring what it could have brought. Had it not been drilled, it would have brought a couple of thousand. But what a beautiful shape. And this is this is what, uh, his name is Freak. It's what he's known for. He gets good things. And this... So this was a this this was a piece we spotted shortly after it went up. We had it uh, featured in the letter. Very lovely Chinese jade uh, figure of uh, two adult rams and a young ram. There's the young ram here. In this box, just a tip to those of you that get these: if you ever get a jade or a vase or something in one of these silk boxes, some dealers like to they could discard them. They think it you know make it look like it's not uh, authentic. Um, these boxes were used traditionally hev heavily uh, from the 1890s onward uh, when the piece was going to be given as a gift to someone or they wanted to have a nice presentation box. Do not discard these and show the, if you sell on eBay, don't do it without the box. The box uh, gives a lot of confidence to the buyers and you'll get a much better result with the box. We had a jade vase that was very similar to this a few weeks ago, it brought a lot of money. There's the stand. Beautifully done little uh, figure. Nice detail. Uh, look at the the way the leg is finished and so forth. Good, good jade. Uh, and Awasian 8, he's a seller up here in Portland, Maine, the United States. 
Uh, he has a store up there, and uh, he does a lot of picking, and he buys excellent things. And we want to look at his completed listings over here. Completed listings. Let's uh, check that. There it is. Okay. And uh, I wanted to take a look at a couple of things he had up this past weekend. One was a this flattened snuff bottle. There, yeah, about brought sixteen hundred and ninety dollars. Particularly attractive little snuff bottle. Uh, well painted, nice landscape scene. Uh, Famille rose uh, enamels all over. It has a chin lung mark on the base. Nicely dressed brown lip. And it, there's the side view of it. This is a very nice little vase. It stands nicely. Some of these don't stand very well. You stand them up, they fall over. But this one stands beautifully. And it brought $1,690. Nice straight little vase. And uh, let's see who else we had on here. Oh, Gunnar Jacobson. Gunnar had up, he's a seller in Sweden we pay attention to. And he always has interesting things. He has a good eye. Uh, very nice copper red vase. Little. This is a small vase, about six inches tall, about seven hundred twenty-one dollars. Uh, copper red, uh, beautifully done. Here's uh, some details of it. Let's take a look at the foot. There you go. Typical nineteenth-century foot. That's what you want to see. Often the bases of these these Lang Yao pieces also have a greenish or bluish tinge to them, which is at variance with this up here, which is with a copper red. Uh, during the firing turned green uh, due to the metal iron content, metal content in the uh, copper content in the uh, glaze. There it is. Did well. $721. And he also had a plate. I want to go. There it is. This one. This is a very rare plate, a very rare pattern. It's a Kung Shi plate, most off with a pattern most often associated with Nabashima type wares in Japan. But this one is Chinese. And uh, you'll, you know that instantly by taking a look at the foot of this thing. It has a classic uh, V-shaped, very smooth, very uh, nicely done uh, foot. It has a Ming mark, which is typical of Kung Shi pieces. And uh, had a hairline in it. I remember this had a hairline somewhere there at the bottom. There's the hairline, uh, which held the price back. Had it not had the hairline, it probably would have brought 1500 to 2000 But Lovely, lovely piece. And uh, the last thing I want to look at is uh, this piece by Start Point. He's a fairly new seller to us. Uh, it doesn't have a huge number of feedbacks yet, 200 of them. But this one, this was a very fine, large, famille rose, a uh, famille ver, rather, kung shi uh, plate. Uh, lovely pattern, beautiful pattern. It has some wear to the iron red. I expect that on, on kung shi pieces. They often are up through here and there was a little tiny bit of wear to the enamels a little wear up here and there's some fritting and despite that it still brought uh, $2,449 in the US or 1,650 pounds but it was a good size over 12 inches 13 and 3 quarter inches highly desirable size for Kung Shi smaller plates don't bring anywhere near that and uh, that's it it was a good week there were some lovely things and uh, we hope that uh, for those of you that got it, benefited from it, and uh, it's always fun to go back and see how they did. Until next time, thanks for visiting, and uh, good luck out there hunting around. Bye-bye.